Hello YouTube friends. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I uh, just wanted to say thank you so much for, for subscribing to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do that. Just because we're expanding our horizons when it comes to creativity. Today we're actually going to be doing some machine embroidery or thread painting. We are going to be working on the Tree of Life. And I have two examples here. The one on the left is actually showing a, um, a circle that's actually fabric. And I just used heat and balm, um, adhere that circle on there. And then the one on the right is actually painted on. And that's what I'm going to be showing an example of today. I hope you stick around and have fun with this uh, stitching today that we're going to be doing. I'll see you on the other side. eight inch square of cotton fabric here and what I've done is I've taken my chalk and I've made a line that's three quarters of an inch away from the raw edge and I'm doing that because I want to make sure that I do not do any stitching past that area. I have a cap here that I'm going to use um, to create my circle in the center. This is about a two and a half inch circle and I'm just going to use this fabric pencil that I have, it's white, and just mark that just above the halfway mark. I have these uh, Lumiere paints by Jacquard, and this color is called Metallic Circle, or excuse me, Metallic Silver, and I'm gonna paint that just right inside that circle area. Use any kind of fabric paint that you want. Um, this is, just happens to be what I have that um, shows up really pretty against black, so I thought this would be a good combination. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint my circle in. This does come across solid if you've never used these before. They will not wash out. So I'll go ahead and finish painting this and we'll let it dry and then we'll do the stitching pearlescent turquoise. Same um, paint by Lumiere, Jacquard. Just kind of want to get more of an overtone of blue to the silver. It's going to be very subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and make my sandwich. What I'm using here is actually a drop cloth um, that I purchased from Home Depot and I love to use this. It's it's inexpensive, it's heavy duty, and it makes a great back for something like this. It makes it more stable so that um, just trying to eliminate as much uh, rippling and puckering as possible, especially because I want to be doing a lot of stitching on the tree itself. Um, I have a cotton batting here and I gotta make sure I get my needle punch side down. Facing up, I mean, and then put my painted fabric right on the top there. And what I'm going to go ahead and do first before I do any stitching is actually draw my picture. And I'm going to be use, doing a tree on here. And I'm just going to use this white fabric pencil that I have and it'll be easier to see for stitching on. I have a, just a light rough sketch there of my tree and I, I didn't sketch in the brand or the uh, leaf top, the canopy top. Um, I have here a thread that I'm going to be using to stitch around the uh, circle in the center there and it's pretty much a really good match for that color and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my machine, thread that in my machine and just stitch that up. I do have um, black thread in my bobbin, and I usually choose a color that's going to match the top really well, just because if it happens to pop up at all, it's not going to be seen, or at least not likely to be seen. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you is, even though I painted in the circle here, if you're wanting to do a design similar to this, you certainly do not have to have paint to do this. On this particular one, I actually cut out a circle. I used Fusion Stick to put this on there. And so this circle here is fabric. 
So you can definitely use that instead. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my um, thread now to um, just an all-purpose black thread. I'm going to do some concentric circles going around. I'm wanting to make the black area recessed more because that's the background. So by stitching on that and also by stitching on it, I'm also creating an even, trying to create as even a density of the thread stitching as possible to help eliminate um, as much of puckering or waviness to the fabric. Although there will always be some, and most of that can um, be taken out by just using a hot, steamy iron. to these um, circles I'm doing around this uh, center I, I don't really care that I'm going over the line in fact I want to because those I want to just disappear off into the background keep when I'm doing the stitching for the tree I'm going to keep that tree within those chalk lines that I have around the border I'm going to thread this onto my machine now this is going to be the color that I use for the tree tree trunk roots branches it's kind of a it's kind of a taupey gray but this is by Sulky. I can show you the numbers. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the trunk and the roots of the tree. Now, one of the things I wanna point out is whenever I come back into the trunk of a tree, when I come down the roots and go back, I'm not going to stop in the same place because I don't wanna create this line across my piece. And again, I'm not gonna take my stitching anywhere past this chalk line that I have around the border.
good about the roots. So I think I'm going to go ahead and work on the trunk and the branches. And I'm going to turn this around now so that I can actually see where I'm going. I want to be really careful not to take my branches too high because I don't want my tree to get too high. So um, I think I might... Okay, I've stitched in the branches how I want them to be and I'm going to go ahead and switch my thread now to the color that I'm going to use for the flowers but first I just wanted to point out that um, at this point you can decide how densely uh, stitched you want your components to be because obviously the more dense you make it the higher the risk you run of having puckers or just a lot of waviness. This is a thread that I have that's by Superior Threads. This is their Rainbows line. Um, it's really beautiful. It has quite the um, nice uh, color change to it. But I'm going to be using this for the canopy of the tree. And you can kind of see that will be really pretty against that blue uh, circle there. I'm going to um, go ahead and thread this onto my machine. I'm also going to be setting my machine to a zigzag stitch. And um, I'm just going to probably just use the... Uh, a 4.5 width. It doesn't really matter so much um, just because, you know, it's the movement that you use that's going to determine how wide or how narrow the stitches are going to be. It's kind of fun to play with a zigzag um, when you're doing your threads painting with it because you can really get some different effects with it and you can make some actually pretty nice lines even. Um, but this is going to be the whole leaf um, color is from these zigzag stitches. I've turned the piece this way now so that I can actually get the zigzags going in different directions. I don't really want a pattern so much as I just want an all over mess of color. Okay, 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way the, the leaf colors come out. And um, I do have some waviness. You can see how this is pulling up in here. And I could come in here and do some stitching with the black just in the negative space. And I still might do that. But I'm going to go ahead and take this to the iron. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to give it a lot of steam, press it good, and just see um, how I'm doing so far with the displacement of the fabric. I'm really happy with the way it's laying down flat and don't really have to worry about stitching it down here in the negative space at all. It's doing really well. And um, I think I'm, I'm just going to take you this far with it, but I will go ahead and finish it and sh and because uh, um, you all know how to finish a quilt. So I'm just gonna... Okay, I have this all done. I put the um, I put a little trim in here and then also the binding. I got uh, four squares or four triangles over the... Um, over the corners just for um, keeping it taut and hanging it. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, sometimes it's, you just can't really explain it. You can get some hints and stuff, but it's really just about jumping in both feet and and trying it out and, and seeing what works. And when you come across some issues, you know, if, if you can watch a video or you can, you know, message somebody, talk to somebody like myself, um, help it work out the kinks, it's always great. Anyway, um, this is just a little example of doing some thread uh, painting and embroidery with the thread on the machine. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope everyone is staying happy and healthy. And until next time, have a great one.